I just spent the last five days streaming Hogwarts Legacy nearly non-stop. And after 60 hours of gameplay, we beat the main quest, a bunch of side missions, and a ton of puzzles. I took that entire experience and distilled it down into one list of things that I wish I knew when I started or some helpful tips that I found along the way. Whether you're just getting started in the game or you're trying to figure something out or improve your character, this list will definitely help you. And if you have some tips of your own, make sure to drop them below to help out other adventurers like yourself. Let's get started. And as always, there could be spoilers in here, so watch at your own risk. So first, let's start off with some simple tips that are still very important. This first one is something that I didn't realize right away, and neither did a lot of my viewers. But inside of the challenges menu, you can actually collect these rewards. They're not just achievements, but there are things that you can collect that range from traits, to cosmetic items, to permanent upgrades for your character. So if you've missed a bunch of these, go back in and you can collect quite a few things. Once you're inside Hogwarts Castle, one of the first things you should do is accept as many of the quests that you can find. A lot of these quests involve going around the castle and finding any number of lost items, and you can't collect those items until you've started the quests. In your time in Hogwarts Legacy, you're going to be running throughout the castle a lot, so why not get those quests so that as you run past an item, or a puzzle, or any of the collectibles, you can actually get them because you started those quests. Some of them I didn't do until very later on in the game, and I could have probably finished them off way earlier if I had simply picked up those quests in the beginning. When it comes to cosmetics in Hogwarts Legacy, unfortunately a lot of the outfits do look the same and there isn't a lot of variety, but a few of them are incredible and you can actually get them pretty early on in the game. The first one is your house cloak that you can get through the Dedalian Keys quest, or the house chest quest. You have to go around, find 16 keys, unlock 16 lockers with those keys, get the tokens, and return to the chest in your common room. Once you've placed all 16 tokens within the chest, you could unlock it and get a house cloak that glows and is animated every time you fire a spell. In my opinion, this is one of the best cloaks you can get, and you might as well get it as early as possible so that you look fresh the entire time you play the game. Secondly, this is one of my favorite cosmetics, and it doesn't take very much to get it. You can get a full suit of shining armor for simply defeating 30 spiders. Wait, what? Armor? Oh my god. No way. Oh, that's... That is fire! What? Just like we mentioned earlier, this is obtained through the challenges menu. Once you defeat 10 spiders, you get the spider slayer armor. Once you defeat an additional 20 spiders, you will get that spider slayer helm as well. While we're on the topic of cosmetics, don't forget that you can actually change your character's appearance without affecting the stats of what they're actually wearing. A lot of my viewers were upset because they had to wear gear that was, quite frankly, pretty ugly because it had good stats. But what you can do in the gear menu is override whatever you're wearing with the appearance of another item. So if you have a goofy looking wizard hat, but you want to wear a top hat, you can still wear that wizard's hat, but you can override it with the look of a top hat. Just hover over each of the gear slots and you can actually access an appearance menu where you have access to many different cosmetic items that they don't affect your stats, but just affect how your character looks. And more specifically on the robe slot, if you have a robe that has a hood, you can toggle that on or off as well so that you can pull up your character's hood. And just like we mentioned, even if it ends up hiding what you have on your head, you'll still get those stats, even though it makes it look like your character isn't wearing a hat. Also, once you've found any item, it will permanently unlock as an appearance. So don't be afraid to sell it because you can always use it cosmetically. When it comes to talent points, there's a lot of customization and you can really pick and choose whatever you want. But there are five talent points that I recommend you allocate no matter your playstyle. The first three points that I would recommend are in the core section of the talents. You can allocate one point to get an additional page for all of your spells. I was hesitant at first to do this because I didn't think I'd need this many pages, but by the end of the game, I can assure you, needing four separate pages of spells is a must. Not only will you want one or two pages just for combat, but you'll also want a page just for taking care of your beasts and capturing new ones, as well as a page for moving around and decorating the different items inside the Room of Requirement. You'll also want a few slots for some utility spells such as Reparo or Lumos. The next talent point that I recommend is Wiganweld Potency 1. 
it's going to increase the amount of healing that each potion does. And if you're feeling extra ambitious once you're level 16, you can get Wigan Weld Potency 2, which will further enhance the effects of these potions. One potion will completely heal you all the way. And the final talent point I highly recommend is Swift. When you hold down the roll button, your player will actually teleport extra far, which is very good for moving around the battlefield quickly. These next two tips are absolutely crucial and the first thing I would tell any new players in Hogwarts Legacy. Now that we know that you can go in and collect rewards from challenges, there are certain challenges you want to complete immediately because they give you permanent upgrades to your character. The first one is very easy but something you might not think of. Go and complete two Merlin Trials as quickly as possible because it will grant you a plus four inventory upgrade. Your current inventory is only 20 slots and that will fill up very quickly, I promise. And it's very annoying when you run out of space and constantly have to go back to Hogsmeade to sell some gear. Having a bigger backpack will make it so that you can adventure out there just a little bit longer and bring back a little bit more when you go to cash in on all those galleons. Completing another 6 trials will also grant you another plus 4 upgrade, meaning that in just 8 trials, that's 8 inventory spaces. You can actually go on and get even more upgrades from more Merlin Trials to make your bag even bigger. And going hand in hand with this one is the biggest mistake I made playing Hogwarts Legacy. I never went and did any of the Ancient Magic traces. So the Ancient Magic meter is pretty much your ultimate ability. And I beat the whole game with only two ultimate bars. If you go and complete just two Ancient Magic Traces, you can get a third bar, and this is insanely helpful when fighting several enemies or dealing massive damage to a boss. How far in the game am I? I'm almost 50 hours. I'm like 49 hours in, and I'm 61% done. Let's start checking some of the stuff off. We got collect all traces from two Magic Hotspots. And what do we get? Additional capacity added to your Ancient Magic Meter. Oh, what? Are you, are you kidding me? He has three seg- what? He has three segments on his magic meter. There is no way I just beat this whole game and only had two magic meters. If you continue with this challenge of doing more ancient magic traces, you can actually unlock two more bars on top of that for a max of five. So quickly going out and exploring with a few Merlin trials and a few ancient magic traces can get you the permanent upgrades of bag slots and ancient magic meters that are going to help you out for the entire game. Now, if you're like me, you think Hogwarts Legacy is beautiful. Throughout my entire playing session, almost every single moment could have been taken as a screenshot and framed for how beautiful this game is. Now, if you want to take the absolute best photos in-game, I highly recommend going into the settings and turning off all of the different HUD elements. This will give you a very clean look with nothing on the screen except your character and the scenery. It's not an official photography mode, but this is the best thing that we can do in order to take clean screenshots of Hogwarts Legacy. Capturing beasts is such an important part of the game because you can take care of them, you can collect resources from them to upgrade your gear, or you can also sell those beasts as a great way of making money. This tip is one of the ways I think is the fastest for capturing beasts. You can actually use a spell such as Glacius to freeze them in place, which makes capturing them so much easier. I personally have an entire page of spells dedicated just towards taking care of beasts. I can brush them, feed them, capture them, and I have that Glacia spell for freezing them in place. And since we're talking about beasts, once you have your vivariums, go and purchase a beast feeder from Tomes and Scrolls. This will automatically feed all of your beasts, which makes collecting their resources so much faster. Once you have a beast feeder placed, all you need to do is use the brushing spell in order to collect. This will significantly save you time as you can quickly collect and get back to gear crafting. Tomes and Scrolls also sells upgrades for potion making and herbology. You can have a table that can grow up to five plants at once or a T-shaped potion making station for brewing up to three potions at one time. Now that you've got your vivariums up and running, it's time to learn about the loom and upgrading your gear, which is a huge help in making your character very strong towards the mid and later stages of the game. Once you've unlocked all of the beasts, you'll pretty much have access to every one of the materials for upgrading, so you can now start maxing out all of your gear at any time. And since you can now collect almost any material, you don't have to worry about waiting until you have the best gear to start doing the upgrades. You can even just upgrade your current gear for those immediate bonuses, even if you end up finding something better later on. Also, it's a bit tricky, but some items that you may find might seem like they're worse, but they're actually better. For example, take this Sunrise Robe. Even though it says minus 36 defense, that's because I haven't upgraded it yet. 
So don't just trash items just because it shows a red down arrow. Once I upgrade this, it'll actually be better than the other sunrise row because the other one is already upgraded. Also, adding traits to gear is super important for making your character strong towards the end of the game. However, many of these traits need to be found throughout the world. So bandit camps are one of the best places I've found for finding these traits. Once you clear out the camp and defeat all of the enemies, a chest will spawn that you can collect, which will officially complete the camp and likely has a trait inside as well. And last but not least, a combat tip for breaking through your enemy's defenses. We know we have to use the same colored spells to break through shields, but did you know that throwing any of the objects around you at an enemy will break their shield? And if you're far into the game and you want to dabble in the dark arts, any of the unforgivable curses will break through an enemy's shield no matter what color it is. This also works for ancient magic attacks as well. Being in a good rhythm in combat is so important, so sometimes breaking through the enemy's shield with an object or a curse is better than fumbling around and trying to get the perfect color for the perfect moment. Well, there you have it. Those were the tips that I learned while playing Hogwarts Legacy, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Every moment felt so magical and the world is completely beautiful. I hope you guys learned something new and enjoyed the video. Let me know below if there was something that you didn't know. But as for now, that's all I have for you. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.